new video from Starship Flight 11 has recently been released showcasing the booster's impressive new capabilities, highlighting SpaceX's rapid technological advancements. However, alongside these achievements, several separate booster components have also been spotted. This serves as a reminder that even significant breakthroughs come with opportunities for improvement. Furthermore, a former SpaceX engineer has revealed his new company's ambitions, sparking discussion about humanity's potential future destinations, whether to the Moon or Mars. Let's discuss it all in today's episode of NR Studio. SpaceX continues to wow everyone with its post-flight updates, sharing new footage that presents data never revealed during the original livestream. Previously, they provided footage of the booster detailing aspects of the fuel tank and heat shield. Now, SpaceX has released another incredible video focusing on the B-15 landing process. Looking back at the live stream, the B-15 landing segment seems somewhat limited. The footage shows the booster standing upright and a close-up view before quickly transitioning to onboard visuals. Because of this transition, it's difficult to clearly see how the booster behaves in the final moments of its descent. This makes the newly released footage particularly thrilling. It was shot from a wider camera perspective, providing an overall view of the engine fires and, more importantly, a key feature that SpaceX is highlighting, the super heavy hover. At the beginning of the video, we observe the engines firing. 13 engines are active, beginning the landing burn phase at approximately T plus 6 minutes and 18 seconds. This burn is intended to slow the booster's descent as it approaches the ocean. About 5 seconds later, at T plus 6 minutes and 23 seconds, the fires appear to flicker and diminish, indicating the shutdown of some of the engines. This aligns with the live stream where SpaceX acknowledged that 8 of the centering engines were deactivated, leaving 5 operational engines, consisting of 3 center engines and 2 from the center ring. This setup is crucial because it embodies SpaceX's intended evaluation for the V3 iteration of Starship, which aims to facilitate a new landing setup that will eventually be integrated with the Megazilla capture system. The idea is that by methodically reducing the number of engines, SpaceX can improve precision and stability throughout the descent. Both in the live stream and the newly available footage, it appears that the booster slows significantly after the initial burn. This process lasts for approximately 7 seconds before the fires flicker once again, indicating another shutdown phase for the engines. At this point, the engine's power decreases from 5 to 3 at T plus 6 minutes and 30 seconds. This gradual measured decrease continues for another 6 seconds until approximately T plus 6 minutes and 36 seconds when all remaining engines cease operation. The booster then free falls into the ocean. When examining the progression, it becomes apparent that the landing segment, especially the period of levitation, extended significantly longer than typical. Following the reduction of engine power from 13 to 5 and subsequently to 3, the booster maintained a hover for an approximately 13 second interval, from T plus 6 minutes and 23 seconds to T plus 6 minutes and 36 seconds. This can be further confirmed by analyzing altitude metrics. With all 13 engines operational, the booster swiftly descended from around 2.5 kilometers to 1.1 kilometers, achieving a descent speed of about 28 kilometers every second. Nevertheless, as the engine count diminished to 5 and later to 3, the rate of descent decreased considerably, with a drop from 1.1 kilometers to 0.2 kilometers, resulting in a speed of only 0.07 kilometers per second. This observation substantiates that the booster was effectively hovering during the last 13 seconds. So what implications does this have for the forthcoming operations of SpaceX? The company indicated that this trial was intended for the impending V3 model. In this updated version, SpaceX aims for both the booster and the ship to land utilizing the Mechazilla arms at Starbase. In the V1 model, the strategy was to decrease engine power from 13 down to 3 directly before landing. This approach has been effectively employed in several test flights, although it still poses a possible risk due to the abrupt reduction in thrust. In contrast, the V3 model appears to enhance this procedure with a transition from 13 to 5 and then to 3 engines. By gradually diminishing thrust, SpaceX can improve its ability to manage the stability and alignment of the booster. This adjustment grants the rocket additional time to accurately adjust its position in preparation for being captured by the large chopstick arms of Mechazilla. Each segment of the 13 to 5 3 transition aligns with a particular phase of the retrieval operation. The operation of 13 engines facilitates the primary deceleration, aiding the booster in its return toward the tower. The five-engine stage permits the booster to navigate closer to the tower and refine its orientation. 
Ultimately, the three-engine phase maintains a deliberate hover, allowing the mechanism ample opportunity to align precisely between the two arms and descend gently into placement as the chopsticks close around it. After the alignment of the booster's catch points with the mechazilla rails is achieved, the engines can be fully turned off, resulting in a smooth and accurate landing. This prolonged and meticulously coordinated procedure not only enhances precision, but also optimizes fuel consumption by deactivating the outer engine sooner. The leftover fuel is conserved for the most critical engines during the final approach and hovering phase. This strategy alleviates strain on the rocket while assuring that the booster can sustain control for an extended period if necessary. Hovering for 13 seconds might appear excessive, but it is a crucial part of the process. SpaceX is evaluating the duration for which the booster can safely remain aloft before reaching limitations due to fuel or engine capabilities. This information enables future landings to be quicker, safer, and more precise. By testing these boundaries now, SpaceX enhances its options for future tower catches, allowing engineers to determine the exact duration the booster can remain stable in case additional alignment time is necessary. Many anticipate that a complete Mechazilla catch might occur around Flight 13 early next year, an event that would signify one of the most ambitious engineering challenges ever attempted. With the hover test successfully verified, SpaceX has demonstrated extraordinary control and made significant progress toward achieving full and rapid rocket reusability. Nonetheless, this is not the whole picture. Although Flight 11 represented another significant advancement, the booster still encounters multiple obstacles that need to be addressed before SpaceX can make its next significant advancement. Soon after Flight 11, a plethora of images and videos emerged online displaying debris, including various composite overwrapped pressure vessels, or COPVs, and other components floating toward the Mexican shore. These were clearly fragments of the Starship booster that detached after it landed in the water. In one particularly striking photo, viewers spotted a dolphin carcass drifting among the debris. This sparked considerable speculation that the Starship's clash with the ocean could have negatively affected marine creatures. However, additional investigations and reports later clarified that the dolphin was already dead before the booster's descent, with its presence among the wreckage being a mere coincidence. This clarification was vital as it alleviated initial worries about possible ecological damage resulting from the flight. It confirmed that Starship's landing had not directly jeopardized wildlife or the adjacent ecosystem. Nonetheless, the sight of COPVs and other items landing on the shore raises legitimate worries regarding containment and ecological stewardship. SpaceX must take greater care to reduce such debris in upcoming tests, while splashdown serve as temporary solutions as the company improves its recovery strategies, preventing equipment from floating away is crucial. Achieving this not only safeguards the environment, but also enhances public and regulatory confidence, both essential aspects as SpaceX approaches regular operational status. Recovery initiatives have already started. Cleanup crews have been observed gathering and transporting Starship parts from the beaches to specified storage locations for further examination. SpaceX is also anticipated to collaborate with local agencies to ensure a thorough environmental evaluation and recovery process. These retrieved components, albeit scattered, will provide valuable insights into the stresses and failure points the booster faced during re-entry and landing. Ultimately, events like this highlight the significance of SpaceX's next major goal, mastering the catch and recovery technique with the Mechazilla arms. That's all for today's episode. See you in the next time.